it should be self-evident and it kind of is intuitive, but if we have dirty bedding and the cow is lying in dirty bedding, and what I mean by dirty is just high bacteria counts, um, she's lying in that bedding, the teat skin, the teat end is exposed to those pathogens, and then it's just a hop, skip, and a jump up into the, the street canal, up into the gland, and now we have mastitis. So there are numerous studies over the decades describing high bacteria counts in bedding, associated with higher risk for either clinical or subclinical mastitis in the cows. And yeah, to your point, there's been more interest of late maybe in, in studying bedding again, or renewed interest, uh, because we have seen the introduction of, of newer bedding materials. Um, sand isn't new, but recycled sand, um, more, more farms are, are using that material instead of, you know, shavings or straw, that kind of thing. Um, but also recycled manure solids or biosolids. Welcome to the Dairy Health Black Belt Podcast. I'm Luciano Cacheta from University of Minnesota. Uh, this podcast is produced by Wise Genetics, and in this podcast series, we try to bring the most up-to-date information that we have in the dairy industry and the dairy dairy science to you in a in a short format, so we can all have this discussion and we can listen to this when we're traveling uh, back and forth from work. So we want to make this. Uh, to transfer the knowledge to you as quickly as possible in a way that it's effective. And today, uh, I have once again uh, the opportunity to have some conversation with Dr. Sandra Godin, my colleague here at the University of Minnesota, that is an expert in colostrum, but she's also an expert in mastitis. And lately, she has been doing a lot of research on batting management. Welcome again to the podcast, Dr. Godin. Thank you, Luciano. So, Dr. Godin, we, we uh, have talked many years uh, and learned about bedding and how that's important for welfare and for uh, cow comfort. But lately, we have seen the rise of different uh, bedding materials, and it has been, like, you have been in the forefront of the, the observation and the research about those uh, bedding materials and what's the influence of those in the other health. So, can you brief, briefly explain to us what's, how the Batting material itself can promote or derail other health. Yes, it, it should be self-evident and it kind of is intuitive, but if we have dirty bedding and the cow is lying in dirty bedding, and what I mean by dirty is just high bacteria counts, um, she's lying in that bedding, the teat skin, the teat end is exposed to those pathogens, and then it's just a hop, skip, and a jump up into the, the street canal, up into the gland, and now we have mastitis. So there are numerous studies over the decades describing high bacteria counts in bedding, associated with higher risk for either clinical or subclinical mastitis in the cows. And yeah, to your point, there's been more interest of late maybe in, in studying bedding again or renewed interest uh, because we have seen the introduction of, of newer bedding materials um, Sand isn't new, but recycled sand. Um, more more farms are are using that material instead of you know shavings or straw, that kind of thing. Um, but also recycled manure solids or biosolids has become increasingly popular over the last decade or so, and it's got some special challenges in terms of managing bacteria counts because biosolids comes from manure, and so in, inherently, just naturally, it tends to be. Uh, higher bacteria, higher risk bedding material, and yet producers want to use it for a number of other reasons, convenience, perceived lower cost, and so forth. So um, we have done a fair bit of research ourselves and others on how can we manage these materials differently or better in order to reduce that risk. Why Zenetics turns podcast airtime into brand authority. We don't sell ads, we elevate voices. Curious how far your voice can go to become a reference in the industry and attract more leads? Scan the QR code and discover how we can turn your expertise into unmatched brand authority. Let's transform expertise into influence, starting now. I want to point out like, and just break, highlight one comment you made that it was made, it, you, you, did, you made in passing, but it wasn't your intention, but it's like you, you comment and said like, I'm quoting not word for word, but like, when we think about cleanliness, we're thinking about bacteria count because, and I want to highlight this because we can all see 
a dirty bedding. Like if the cow like it have manure or urine, it's easy to see. But it, just because we don't see these gross elements doesn't mean it's clean, right? So like it's it was very good, and I, I wanted to highlight this, this bacterial count. That's, that's something that we're looking as the hygiene aspect of it. Uh, but you mentioned all these different types of bedding that are available and are coming up. Is there anything that's better or worse? Uh, how does the, the different ones impact the other health? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, um, the uh, inorganic, so that would be sand, for example, um, because it usually has less organic matter to support bacteria. Um, new sand that's never been used is kind of the gold standard. It is going to be as clean as we can get it. So new sand, never been used sand is always the gold standard. Um Shavings or straw are still commonly used more so in smaller herds than in large herds, um, but with the sand or biosolids increasingly adopted in, in the larger herds. No, that's good. And like, again, and I think this is like, it is good to know the organic and inorganics that they're definitely different. They should be right that they're organic and inorganic, right? Like we sh it should be uh, uh, easy to spot that difference. But, and then to tie this to what we just discussed before about like, the bacteria count and all that. So how can producers and the, the allied industry, whoever is like man managing or monitoring this, how can they um, monitor the quality of the batting? Like in not the quality on the, like the gross particles or anything, but like quality itself and the hygiene of it. Well, just like we would culture milk to look at bacteria levels in milk, we can also culture bedding. Um, and there are special protocols uh, available online, for example, the University of Minnesota Lab for Utter Health. Um, you can go online and find protocols on how to collect those samples, how to handle them, just like you would milk, you chill them down or you freeze them down, ship them quickly to the lab and we will culture them for you and describes uh, what the levels of bacteria are and specific bacteria that we know are associated with impaired other health, like the strep species or the coliforms or Klebsiella, um, things like that. Um, so bedding culture is, is how it's done. And uh, you can send it to our lab or you could send your samples to other labs and they will culture them and interpret them for you. And then you can just see how clean or dirty the bedding is. And I would recommend sampling at two different sampling points. One would be sampling the fresh bedding that is about to be put into the stall. Like it should be as clean as it gets because it hasn't been put in the stall yet. So that's as good as it gets. And then you may collect a second set of samples from the stalls after it's been in there for a day or two. And, and then you can measure how much increase or growth of, of bacteria counts is occurring after it's in the barn in the stall okay yeah so th this is good because that that's a good segue to another question that that i would like to ask you because you said like well we now we know how to monitor it so if you had if you have good material put it in and if it's inc like increasing too much when it's in the bedding uh let's say uh, farm like and i'll use green saw like manure solids just because it's a, the organic it's the one that have more issues right uh what if we have like that before putting on the bed, we have issues, right? Like, and now this is your bedding material. What do I do? <laughs> that's that's exactly the challenge, Luciano. If it's already dirty, contaminated before it even goes in the stall, things are only going to get worse after that. And so, for biosolids, for example, that's a, a special challenge because, it's like I mentioned, you know, we all understand it's just pressed solids. Um, it's manure. There are going to be high bacteria counts in it. And so um, producers wanting to do, wanting to clean that up before they put it in the stall, there are some processing techniques available to farms. Um, <clears throat> anything, well, it involves heating. Um, if they were to put the slurry through an anaerobic digester before separating the solids, that will do some to decrease the coliform and Klebsiella's. Uh, counts. It won't do much for streps, though. Unfortunately, strep bacteria seem to survive digestion nicely. So then we're looking at post-pressing processing techniques, such as mechanical hot air dryers, uh, infrared dryers, or maybe drum composting. Those would be techniques applied here in the upper Midwest to heat. Basically, essentially, we're trying to pasteurize these solids to heat them up to kill some amount of the bacteria. We won't get it down to zero, but if we can reduce bacteria counts lower below the you know levels at which they are at risk, risk for the cow, then we've got cleaner solids ready to go into the stalls. Yeah, that's good. Like, yeah, I, 
it would be nice if we could like get down back here to zero, but like you have to remember what are you starting with, right? The material starting with makes it kind of hard for us to go down to zero. But one thing that I, I wanted before we finish, um, what I wanted to mention is we talked here and we give the, give the example of the, the organic side of things, but the inorganic material could also have some issues, right? Like we talked in the beginning, have high smart, high uh, cell counts in the sand. Uh, so instead of like, I just want to like give your take also on the inorganic, on the sand ones, because I don't want to like people that are using sand think, oh, I'm out of the woods. I don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Well, like I mentioned before, new virgin sand, if you will, if we're putting brand new sand that's never been used into a stall, it's generally very, very clean. And that's the best case scenario. But a lot of our producers use recycled sand um, where they've, they've taken the sand out of the slurry, separated it from the slurry, and then they're going to reuse it, put it back into stalls. And that recycled sand can have high enough levels of organic matter still in it um, to support high bacterial growth. So we need to pay attention to whatever um, extraction system we are using to extract or you know, reclaim that sand. And it could be mechanical uh, separators or it could be a passive sand lane separator system. But we need to manage either of those two systems in a way that it reduce, removes, excuse me, removes as much organic matter as possible so that we're supporting less bacterial growth. Also, um, the reclaimed sand tends to come out wet too wet and we want to get it dry because dry <laughs> doesn't support bacterial growth wet does support bacterial growth so frequently um, after it's been um, reclaimed we're going to need to let it sit and drain and dry ideally out in the sun for at least a few weeks um, to kind of yeah let the moisture drain away and let some of that the bacteria that are there kind of die off before we put it back in the stalls well, thank you. Thank you for your insights, Dr. God. And this was a very good conversation. It's it's good to bring this up to, to the listeners. We can use either of this material as long as we use it properly. Uh, it, it takes work, right? It's no, it not, it's not just the material where the cows are laying down and it's not affecting anything. It's very important also for our other health. So thank you for your time again. Thank you for uh, sharing with us all your expertise and i'm sure there'll be more questions and we're gonna uh, uh contact you in the future for another participation that'd be fine thank you luciana so this is it for today this is uh concludes another episode of the dairy health black belt podcast which is presented to you by wisenetics thank you all for joining us today uh don't forget to subscribe uh to the podcast give us uh like the the, the podcast, the material, send us feedback, send us comments so we know what, what's next, what it's, uh, the questions you want to answer. We'll be sure that we can actually uh, contact the, the experts to answer those questions. Uh, until next time, uh, I'll see you then. My name is Luciano Cacheta, and this is it for the Dairy Health Black Belt, Black Belt Podcast today. Thank you.